So I just recorded this video like 20 minutes ago and I go to edit it and apparently I was using the wrong microphone. So this is take number two and today we're going to continue on with the angular material table that I showed you in the last video. And if you didn't watch that, highly recommend you do so. That way you're not confused as to what's going on. And in that video, we created an Angular material table and we filled it with data from a dummy API that we uh, just call and it gives us back some to-do list data. And today we're going to talk about how do I add pages to our table so that you know we're not viewing all of the data on one single thing. Like if you have a lot of data, you don't want the user to continuously scroll. You probably want them to have pages of rows where they can click next see the next page of data and so on and so forth. And that's what we're going to add to our table. And if this stuff intrigues you and you just want to continuously learn like how I, I am, I, I always want to continue to learn. That's pretty much what made me create this channel. And then don't forget to hit subscribe. We're getting close to a thousand, which is my ultimate goal right now. And uh, that way you can learn along with me. If I find something new and I discover something, I come on here and I share it with you. If I find something new at work that I use, same thing, I'll come on here and share. So hopefully it's useful to you and uh, we can learn together that way. But enough of that, let's talk about some things you have to do before you add the, what they call the paginator. Let, maybe, let me just show you what it looks like first. So I'll link this down in the description below. This is the Angular Material website and this is just the example that they have. Here's some data and at the bottom they have where you can go through different pages of the data and also change how many rows there are per page. And that's what we're going to be adding in this example to our table. And so a few things you need to do first in the app module, you need to import the Matt Paginator module. And like we've been doing before, then add that module into the import so it can be bootstrapped with this application so it knows what this even is. And if you're looking for this import statement, uh, you can find it if you just Google Paginator and Angular and then the API tab. Here's the import statement. I'll try to remember to put this in the description too. So if you're following along, um, you could find it. And then another thing I had to do, and this really bugged me. I couldn't figure this out for a bit. I had to turn off strict here in the compiler options. I had to set that equal to false. It was true by default. And the reason I had to do that, and you'll, we'll, we'll see why, I guess, in the future when I show you. But we set our data source, its paginator, equal to a paginator that we reference in the HTML. And for some reason, Angular thinks, oh, we didn't initialize the paginator yet, so we're not going to compile and throw an error instead. So I set that to false, and then it would start compiling. So those are two things that I had to do before um, getting started with this. And now we can go look at the TypeScript and talk about how do we change this up a bit to allow that paginator to function. And we don't need to write any custom code. We don't need to write any logic to say, okay, here's the amount of data. Let's divide it by this. And this is how many pages we'll have. No, this does it all for us if we follow a few different steps. So the first thing I did, I set data equal to type any. If you remember, it was type to do list before. I made it to uh, type any. And that's because when we call this get to do's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set data or this dot data rather equal to a new instance of a mat table data source, which is right here. And what this does, it enables us to have this native support or this functionality of filtering, sorting, which we'll probably talk about uh, sorting in the next video. And in our case, pagination. So when we set the data equal to an instance of this, then we have this logic already for us. So what we need to do is we need to set this dot data equal to a new mat, was it uh, table data, I already forget, source. And then in these angle braces, we need to say what kind of data is it? In our case, it's going to be of type to do, not to do list, just to do. And then we're going to pass into the constructor X, which is the data that we get back from the API. And now data is of type um, uh, it's an instance of the mat table data source class. Okay. The next thing I want to do is I want to add that piece of, you know, those buttons and that selector 
below our table in the HTML. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to actually just look at the code in their example. And I'm just going to copy this matte paginator right here. And we can, you know, alter some of this stuff. But for now, I'm going to paste it under our table. You don't want it in your table. You want it outside of your table tags, but right under it. And the page size options, these are a list of options that the user can choose in that drop down. We'll alter these in a second. Um, the show first last buttons, those are these guys. So we can look at the very first page or we can easily go to the very last page. If you don't want those options, you can just remove this property from the tag. And I'm going to actually remove this label as well. So now we have this matte paginator in our HTML. And what we want to do is we want to reference this paginator in the TypeScript. So to do that, we can use a view child. And here we can say, okay, what is the type in the HTML? What is the type of component that we're looking for to grab and then reference? In our case, it's going to be a matte paginator. And I'm going to name this property paginator. And it's going to be of type matte paginator. And there's something else you can do. And I'll show you both ways uh, after we get this up and running. But you can actually name this paginator something and then reference it that way. But when we use just the type instead, it'll look very for the very first instance of the map paginator in our HTML template and grab that. So if there are multiple paginators, that's where you'd want to use something like a unique name. But in our case, there's only one. So it really doesn't matter which one we use. So I'm just going to let it grab the very first one instead. So we have a reference to that paginator in our HTML. And then what we want to do is we want to set this.data.paginator after we already, you know, initialize it equal to the paginator that we just made a reference to this.paginator. And you want to make sure that the way this flows, that the data is already initialized as a mat table data source and then set the paginator. Because if you follow their example here, if we look at the TypeScript and what they do is they add it to a life cycle hook called ng after view init and then they set the paginator. But in our case, uh, if I tried to do that and I did and it failed, because of us setting data equal to an instance of this in the constructor, and then if I were to do this part separately in that ng after view init, um, this wouldn't be initialized before it ran this. So it actually runs this part, if we were to do it that way, before this part, and that, that throws it for a loop, and it doesn't know what we're even referencing. So that's why I do them both in the constructor when we subscribe that way. It's one after another. And we know for a fact that this is an instance of this. And then we go ahead and set the paginator. So let's go ahead and save that and let it recompile. And now let's look at our table. And here we go. We have the uh, paginator at the bottom. And I can scroll through the different pages of data. You can see we're on 11 through 15 of 200. We can just keep going. There we go to the very last page. For the very first page, we could also change how many items per page. And it's pretty easy to add an option to that list. We can just put a comma here, and I'll put 50 and add 50 to that list. We'll save, recompile. And uh, now I have 50, and you can see we, we're showing 50 per page. So let me just show you. Let's give this a unique name, and I'm just going to call this page. So we use the uh, pound symbol page or hashtag page in the opening tag of the element that we're going to reference in the view child. I'll save that. And then when we get the view child of the paginator, um, I'm just going to, in quotes, put that tag that we gave it. In our case, I named it page. So I'm going to put in quotes page. And now uh, this is going to reference that same thing in the HTML. If we look, it still works. But notice if I change this to something, which we don't have a paginator in here with hash something, right? And I go to save and it compiles, it's not going to work. We can see all 200. And then at the bottom, the paginator is 0 out of 0 because it's not being referenced anymore because we gave it this bogus name that doesn't exist. So I change it back to page 
and now it will work as we expect. So that's another way you can do it if you have multiple tables on one view and you're wanting to reference you know, different page innators. You could do it by unique name instead of just grabbing the first one. All right, so that was the Paginator. Hopefully that made sense as we went along, and I do appreciate you watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Let's get to 1,000, and I uh, hope to see you in the next video.